Hello, this is the second part of the video. We will discuss the Bethesda system for reporting of thyroid cytopathology. In the first video, I discussed about the journal categories and the category first and second of the Bethesda system. This is the third category. So if you have not watched that video, I will recommend you to watch that video first and then watch this video. The third category is atypia of undetermined significance. This is used when FNAC of the thyroid is not easily classified into benign, suspicious or malignant categories. And this should be reported in only 3 to 18 percent and should be used as a last resort. It should not be used in a case of confusion. It should be used as a last resort and it has a specific criteria for it. The criteria is first is if we have a prominent population of micro follicles present but there is scant cellularity that is we uh, we can't put it into follicular neoplasm or suspicious for follicular neoplasm because of the scant cellularity. Second is same as that there is predominance of hurdle cells which we don't think is of benign origin and has a very scant cellularity. Other is if uh, there is follicular neoplasm which we suspect and uh, it is hindered by sample preparation. Now this can be also put in the category undiagnostic or uh, inadequate but sometimes it is it's so cellular that we are sure that it is for it will be follicular neoplasm but there is some air drying or clotting effect so we would want to, uh, to convince the clinician to go for re-FNAC so we can put it in this category then focal appearance of malignancy papillary carcinoma in an otherwise benign appearing sample that means that focal presence of uh, nuclear grooves are there, focal clearing of nuclei is present, but the other uh, sample, the predominant sample here is benign. Uh, also, sometimes when we aspirate assist, we we'll, uh, see that some cells appear atypical. That is, the whole uh, population is mostly benign, but few cells uh, lining the cyst can undergo nuclear grooves, prominent nucleoli. So, just to be on the safe side, we have to uh, give this a category. Then, also in patients. Uh, having history of radioactive iodine, carbamazole, antithyroid drugs or due to some repair changes due to prior FNAC, sometimes these cells show atypia. These uh, uh, mirrors can also be reported under this category. Now they're going to the fourth category that is follicular neoplasm or suspicious for follicular neoplasm. Now we should know, we, this is very important to know, that FNAC does not differentiate between a follicular adenoma or a follicular carcinoma. So we have to give uh, the diagnosis as a follicular neoplasm or suspicious for follicular neoplasm. And then this patient has to undergo lobectomy and definite diagnosis is made. Some uh, persons also prefer the term suspicious for follicular neoplasm and not follicular neoplasm because some cases uh, are uh, only hyperplastic proliferation in multinodular goiter and few of those cases are also follicular variant of papillary carcinoma and also parathyroid adenomas. So it's better to give up uh, suspicious for follicular neoplasm. Uh, what is the criteria for this uh, category? Uh, there is high cellularity. There is scant to absent colloid. The colloid must be very scant. Micro follicles are present or trabecular arrangement of the cells is present with crowding and overlapping. And if we find that follicles are mainly found in macro follicles and not micro follicles, this should not be put in this category. It is benign category number two. And only cellularity does not qualify uh, the smears for this category. There must be micro follicles, there must be a scant colloid, there should be uh, collective findings, not only one finding. 
Now, what is microfollicle? Microfollicle has a very specific definition. It has the cells should be less than 15 or 10, even some say, in a circle that is at least two third complete. This is definition of microfollicle. Uh, sometimes uh, in this we have a subcategory follicular neoplasm hurdle cell type or suspicious for follicular ne neoplasm hurdle cell type. In this uh, the cellular aspirate is uh, around 75% of the cells they are hurdle cells and we know how the hurdle cell look like. It has a very abundant finely granular cytoplasm. It has a central to eccentric located nucleus with the prominent nucleolus. So if we find these type of cells we can give this subcategory. This is a picture showing the hurdle cells. Now the fifth category that is the suspicious for malignancy. In this uh, category we must remember that there is strong suspicion for malignancy but the findings are not that sufficient to give a straight conclusive diagnosis. So this uh, allows the pathologist that the clinician goes for the alternate management options like uh, Instead of uh, direct thyroidectomy, the clinician will go for frozen section or lobectomy so that the diagnosis can be made and then the procedure can be completed. Uh, in this also, like example, I will give the suspicious for papillary carcinoma thyroid. So when we will give papillary carcinoma thyroid and we will, when we will give suspicious. In suspicious, uh, if there are patchy nuclear changes present, if uh, we have benign cells and they have, uh, there are a few cells which show nuclear grooves, uh, a nuclear molding, a nuclear enlargement, nuclear clearing, but the internuclear inclusions are not present and secondly all of the cells are not showing the same findings. Second, if few of the nuclear changes are present means there are incomplete nuclear changes. The few nuclear changes are present and few nuclear changes are not present. Means no, there are no evident nuclear grooves, nuclear molding, but we can find paler of the, there is clearing, there is nuclear enlargement. So patchy and incomplete. Then third is we find the uh, features of papillary thyroid carcinoma, but the cell specimen is sparsely cellular. So, some, uh, we can put it in this category. Also, uh, between this category and category number third, that was ATP of unknown significance, we must remember here there is more evidence of malignancy than the benign sample. We have to remember in the, uh, the condition is vice versa. Here we are very sure that it is a malignant process. Only the findings are not that sufficient to say straight away that it is malignant. So also in uh, like uh, papillary carcinoma thyroid, it undergoes cystic degeneration. So we will find few cells, uh, follicular cells having grooves, having pale nuclei, but there is no other benign population of the cells seen. So here we can give the diagnosis as suspicious for papillary carcinoma thyroid. Also we can give suspicious for medullary carcinoma thyroid like if we find monomorphic population of small to medium cells but we are not sure that either the population is lymphoid or medullary. Sometimes we find small amount of colloid uh, but it is uh, actually we think it is myeloid. So it, in this cases we can give suspicion and clinical pathological correlation with serum calcitonin level should be done. That is uh, like suspicious for papillary, uh, medullary carcinoma thyroid. Likewise, we can give for others also, like lymphoma, we can give any med suspicion, we can give. Now, going to straightaway carcinoma, that is the last category. That means, I am not explaining this category. That means a typical book picture of that thyroid carcinoma, you are seeing it. It is. It has that typical picture, like in papillary carcinoma thyroid, we find typical papillae, you think every nuclear character stick is present. So we can give directly papillary carcinoma thyroid. Uh, that was it. This was the categorization according to Bethesda system of the thyroid carcin uh, thyroid FNAC. Uh, it's a uh, uh, thank you. Please like and subscribe to my channel. 
and do ask any queries regarding the topic. Thank